for small business owners and employees, hosted by the Aga Khan Economic Planning Board in conjunction with the Ismaili Chamber of Commerce. My name is Zach Karim, and I will be your moderator for tonight's session. Before I introduce tonight's panelists, I would like to call upon Shanila Babul, national member for Aga Khan Economic Planning Board to say a few words. Shanila? Thank you, Zach. Yali Madat, everyone. My name is Shanila Babu, and I serve on the board of the Aga Khan Economic Planning Board of the United States as a member for economic services. I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar planned by the Economic Planning Board. very confusing for individual employees and small business owners to separate what, what's real from noise. So EPB's primary goal for today's webinar is to cut through the noise and provide our small business owners and employees with updated and accurate information on regulations and benefits. Hamara aaj ka webinar ka maksad hai ki hum aapko regulations aur benefit ke bare mein relevant information farham kare aur hum is tarah karenge ki ye information aapke liye useful aur practical hogi hum case studies discuss karenge examples ke sath so aap relate kar sake ki ye rules kis tarah se apply honge and how you might benefit from the programs and support available to you our second goal is to remind everyone in our Jamaat, individuals and business owners, that no one should feel that they are dealing with this crisis alone. Hum is crisis mein akele nahi hai. And as a community, we are united and will push our way through this crisis and its pressures together. EPB has compiled a lot of information that our Jamaat can use and we are updating it on a regular basis to make sure you have the latest information available on government help. Our institutions have trained specialists who are ready and available to guide and assist you. So please don't feel shy about reaching out to us. I emphasize that our institutions have trained specialists who are guide karne ke liye ready to guide Aap please inka fayda uthaye aur aapko koi bhi question ho ya concern ho to please access ki helpline ko call kare. Access ka number hai 1-844-552-2237. Once again, 1-844-552-2237. With that, I'd now like to give it back to Zach. Zach, thank you. Thank you, Shanila, for sharing your words of support and for EPB's institutional support for anyone in our Jamaat needing assistance. Now let's begin with our session on employment updates for small business owners and employees. As a reminder, the link to tonight's webinar recording plus Economic Resources Guide, ERG, will be made available by email within the next 24 to 48 hours. And finally, as Shanila mentioned, if you have any questions after the webinar or need assistance, please call the Access Helpline. We will provide that again at the end of our session. Undoubtedly, these past few weeks, we have seen events and situations which we have never seen before. We are in uncharted waters and all of us are constantly bombarded with information. Information that we may or may not understand and how it impacts our lives, our businesses, and our careers. Tonight, I have with me an outstanding panel of speakers and collectively, we will work to bring some clarity. Let's jump right in. Samir Karim. You are an employment lawyer and work with many small businesses. The Families First Coronavirus Response Act went into effect today, April 1st. 
What does this act require? Thank you, Zach, and thank you for the opportunity to speak here and help out the Jamaat. This act is the first time that our federal government has ever required private businesses with less than 500 employees to provide paid sick leave benefits to employees that are impacted by COVID-19. While this is a great benefit for employees, it creates some obstacles for small businesses. It applies to businesses that have, again, less than 500 employees, and so it presents some unique challenges for these businesses to support their employees, uh, but still sustain. The paid leave benefits that we'll be discussing today are available for employees beginning today, April 1st, through December 31st of 2020. Now, it's important to note that this is a developing area of the law. Every day, the government is providing us with new information. I believe that the Families First Coronavirus Response Act was discussed in prior webinars, but it's important to know that if you hear something today that sounds a little different from what you heard before, please know the information you're getting today is the most recent and the most accurate. That is very good advice, Samir, thank you. We also have Shamsha Perez, who works at Parkland Hospital in Talent Management and HR. Shamsha, can you please expand on what Samir just said to ensure our listeners understand the concept of paid sick leave? Sure, Zach, and thanks, Samir. So Samir, we were talking about this new act, which some employers ko apne employees ki sick leave or family medical leave ko extend yani ke barhana padega because of covid-19 aur ye provision december 31st tak extend kiya gaya hai excellent thank you samsha so so samir talk to us about what qualifies as paid sick leave or expanded family and medical leave sure so as i mentioned these benefits that are offered under these new laws are available to employees that work businesses that have less than 500 employees. So whether it's one employee or 499, these benefits are available to you. <clears throat> under these new laws, full-time and part-time employees are entitled to get two weeks of limited pay or full pay, and we'll discuss the reasons why, uh, if they can meet some of the qualifying reasons. So. Let's discuss what those qualifying reasons are. What you'll see is a slide that shows a collection of reasons. We'll break them down into three components. So again, this benefit gives employees two weeks of paid sick leave under the following circumstances. So the first bucket that we'll talk about is reasons related to self-care. If you cannot go to work because you are subject to a state local or federal quarantine or isolation order related to COVID-19. You have been advised by a health care provider to self-quarantine due to COVID-19 concerns. <clears throat> or you are an employee that's experiencing symptoms of the coronavirus and seeking a medical diagnosis. For a two-week period, you are entitled to 100% of your salary up to $511 per day. So that means if you're Daily salary amounts to $250 per day. You will get that, you will not get more. And if you make more than $511 per day, you will be capped at $511 per day. So in the instance again, that if you are unable to go to work for a two week period, you are entitled to, for reasons of self-care, 100% of your salary up to $511 per day. So, this new act के बारे में हम कुछ वजाहत करना चाहते हैं ताकि आप लोग इसकी बेसिक रिक्वायरमेंट्स को समझ सकें। पहले तो ये एक्ट के बिना पर एम्प्लॉयज को अपने एम्प्लॉयर्स को अपने एम्प्लॉयज पार्ट टाइम हो या फुल टाइम को दो हफ्तों यानी के टू वीक्स की पेड लीव अप्रूव करना लाज़मी होगी अगर वो इन वजूहात के बिना पर ये लीव की गुजारिश करते हैं। पहली वजह सेल्फ केयर है जिसके जरिए आप कोविड-19 की वजह से सेल्फ क्वारंटीन में हैं। दूसरी वजह अगर आपको आपके डॉक्टर ने सेल्फ क्वारंटीन के लिए कहा है क्योंकि उन्हें शक है कि शायद आपको कोविड-19 के एक्सपोजर हुआ है और तीसरी वजह यह होगी कि आपको कोविड-19 की अलामत यानी कि सिम्टम्स हैं इन तीनों वजहों के बिना पर एम्प्लॉयज सिक लीव रिक्वेस्ट कर सकते हैं और इस एक्ट के जरिए एम्प्लॉयर्स को यह रिक्वेस्ट अप्रूव करना लाज़मी होगी 
مزید اس ایکٹ کے ذریعے امپلائرس کو اپنے امپلائیز کو ان کا ریگولر پے دینا پڑے گا اگر وہ اپنے لیے یہ لیو کی ریکویسٹ کرتے ہیں اس لیو کے مطابق امپلائیز کو 511 ڈیز 11 ڈالرز پر ڈے میکسیمم پے کیا جائے گا تو اگر آپ اس سے زیادہ ایک دن میں کماتے ہیں تو آپ کا کیپ ہوگا 511 ڈالرز پر ڈے That's great information for personal care. Thank you. What if you're taking care of someone else? Sure, Zach. So first, like you said, we talked about the first bucket of self-care. Now the government has created a second category of benefits if you were taking care of someone else. So this someone else does not have to be a family member. It does not have to be a relative. It can be a friend. It can be a neighbor. Um, just someone that you have taken on the obligation to take care of. So if you are taking care of an individual who is subject to a government quarantine or isolation order, or someone that's been advised by a doctor or healthcare provider to self-quarantine, then you as an employee for a two week period are entitled to two thirds of your pay at a maximum of $200 per day. So if you make $100 per day, As an employee, you would get $67 roughly. And if you make your salary amounts to two thirds of your salary amounts to more than $200 per day, you are capped at $200 per day. So that's the second bucket. So if you have to take care of someone else, who has been COVID-19, and the doctor has said to them to self-quarantine, so in this situation, you can request a request for your leave. یہ جاننا بہت ضروری ہے کہ اس سچویشن میں آپ کو آپ کی ٹو تھرڈ پے ملے گی جس کا کیپ ہے ٹو ہنڈریڈ ڈالرس پر ڈے اینڈ فائنلی وی ہیو سین مینی اسکول ڈسٹرکٹ کلوز اسکول اکراس دا کنٹری وٹ از آؤٹ پیرنٹس دیٹ ہیو کڈس ایٹ ہوم ایز اے ریزلٹ آف دیز اسکول کلوزرس زیک دس از دا موسٹ کمپیلنگ آف دا بینیفٹس دیٹ از ناؤ اویلیبل under the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. Uh, this benefit is generally known as the Expanded Family Medical Leave Act or Expanded FMLA. If you have a child that is home from school because their school is closed or their child care provider is unavailable, and for that reason, you are not able to work, this law says that for a 12-week period, you can be away from work. And during that 12-week period, you will be entitled to two thirds of your salary at a maximum number of $200 per day. So similar to the care for others bucket, if your salary is $100 per day, uh, under this benefit, if your kids are home for a 12 week period, you would earn roughly $67 per day. And if two thirds of your salary exceeds 200, well then you're capped at $200 per day. I want to tell you about the provision اگر آپ کے بچے اسکول یا ڈے کر جاتے ہیں اور کووڈ نائنٹین کی وجہ سے ان کا اسکول یا ڈے کر بند ہو گیا ہے تو آپ ٹویلو ویک کی لیو کی درخواست کر سکتے ہیں اگر آپ کے امپلائر کے پاس پانچ سو یا اس سے کم امپلائیز ہیں اس لیو کے ذریعے امپلائیز کو ان کی ٹو تھرڈ پے مل سکے گی جس کا کیپ ہے ٹو ہنڈریڈ ڈالرس پر ڈے I have a question that's coming in around what kind of proof is necessary in order for us to um, use these benefits. Samir, can I push that, push that uh, on to you, please? Of course. So that's a common question that comes up. In the typical context, when you have an employee that is out from work for health reasons, uh, you as an employer often will ask for a doctor's note. Uh, if you are able to get to doctor's note as an employee, you should try to get it. Uh, if, you are, or is it if you are a business and you ask your employee to get a doctor's note and they say, I'm having trouble getting a doctor's appointment, I think you need to provide a little bit of leeway and have some trust, at least right now when doctors are being bombarded. Uh, but asking for some level of proof, I think is fair. But if your employee says, I need a little bit of time to get that proof, uh, I would try to give that to them, just understanding the natures of the times. That's great. Thank you, Samir. In this current environment, as you just said, what happens if an employee has outstanding accrued sick leave or paid time off? Would they lose it? 
So that's a good question. Uh, the answer to that question is no. So the benefits that are being provided under this new law are in addition to any existing pay time off, vacation time, sick time you have through your employer. So as an employer, you cannot tell an employee that rather than you take paid sick leave under this new law, go ahead and use your PTO, your paid time off, or if you take this, I'm going to charge it against your paid time off. This is a completely separate and independent benefit, uh, and employers need to understand that. So, if an employee has sick leave or PTO, then will they lose these hours? So, the answer is no. Employees will not lose this time. It will not reach this time. And my understanding is that employees, sorry, employers, will be eligible for some form of reimbursement. Is that correct, Samir? That's right. So when this law was passed, the hope was to really support the employees to make income. But the government also understood that employers are going through tough times right now. So employers will get 100 uh, percent reimbursement through tax credits and advance payments uh, when you submit your Social Security employer portion of the taxes to cover the expenses that you incur to pay for these benefits. So while you might not get the money on the front end, employers will get the money shortly thereafter through tax filings and reimbursements. And this is something your CPA should be able to help you with. That could be a lot of money for a small business to take on. Are there any exemptions available? So this is an area of the law that is literally developing every day. As of today, if you have less than 50 employees, uh, five zero, 50 employees, are having an employee out for 12 weeks because schools are closed would jeopardize your business, then you may be exempt and not have to provide this benefit. So the natural question that follows then is what does it mean when I say providing this benefit would jeopardize your business? Uh, based on the instructions we've received from the government in the last two days, that means that your expenses would exceed your revenues because the cost to pay the leave uh, would be so much compared to what you're able to generate as revenue today. And two, losing the help would make it difficult for your business to operate. Now, it's important to remember that this exemption only applies to the benefits that are related to schools being closed. So if you have an employee that comes to you and says, I need to take leave because I qualify under the self-care bucket where I get 100% of my salary uh, up to $511 for two weeks, or they say I'm taking care of someone else and I fall into the bucket where I get two-thirds of my salary up to $200 for two weeks, you still have to provide that benefit. There is no exemption to that, regardless whether you have one employee or 50 employees. So, now we small business for some exemptions. So, as you know, the new act is coming in the day and the day of the day, the new act is coming in the day. So, if you have 50 or less employees, और आपका एम्प्लॉय और आपके एम्प्लॉय 12 हफ्तों की लीव पर है क्योंकि उनके बच्चों की स्कूल बंद है तो आपके बिजनेस को चलाना मुश्किल होगा तो अगर ऐसा है तो फिर आप पर एग्जेम्पशन अप्लाई होगा मगर यह जानना बहुत जरूरी है कि यह एग्जेम्पशन सिर्फ स्कूल बंद होने के लिए पर अप्लाई होगा दिस इंफॉर्मेशन हैज बीन वेरी यूजफुल लेट्स पुट into action the knowledge that we have gained by uh, reviewing some case studies. So this act goes into effect today. If my employer closes after today, can I still get paid sick leave or expanded family and medical leave? Sure, that's a good question. So just so we're clear, when you say paid sick leave, paid sick leave is referring to the two week benefit for self care or care for others. And the expanded family and medical leave is referring to the 12 week period when you get to stay home because you cannot work because you're coming home from school. The answer to your question is uh, if your employer's business uh, is closed, then no, uh, you are not entitled to this benefit while the business is closed. This is intended to be a benefit while you are still an active and working employee. If your employer's business shuts down, then you, you lose your entitlement. Uh, to the benefits here. 
یعنی کہ بیسکلی اگر آپ جہاں کام کرتے ہیں وہ بزنس کووڈ نائنٹین کی وجہ سے آج کے بعد بند ہو گیا ہے تو آپ سک لیو کے لیے کوالیفائی نہیں ہوں گے بزنس بند ہونے کی وجہ کم کام یا کوئی گورنمنٹ کی ریکوائرمنٹ بھی ہو سکتی ہے And keeping on the same theme, if my employer closes my work site while I am on paid sick leave or expanded family leave, family and medical leave, what happens? So again, this benefit is tied to uh, your employer's business being open and you being an active employee. So if you are on leave and your employer, because of the nature of the times today, has to shut its business down, you should be paid the leave through the last day the business is open. But after that fact, even if you have more days or weeks left, the employer no longer has to pay you that benefit. So it is really tied to how long that person's business, how long your employer is in business. So sick leave ke hi mauzu pe ye janna zaruri hai ki agar aap paid sick leave par hain aur jis employer ke liye aap kaam karte hain, unka business band ho jaye, to aapke sick leave ka kya hoga? تو جس دن آپ کے امپلائر کا بزنس بند ہو جائے گا آپ اس دن سے سک لیو کے حقدار نہیں رہیں گے اور آپ کی سک لیو ختم ہو جائے گی کیونکہ بزنس بند ہو چکا ہے مگر آپ ان امپلائمنٹ بینیفٹ کے لیے اپلائی کر سکتے ہیں sick leave or expanded family medical leave under the emergency paid sick leave act or Emergency Family Medical Leave Expansion Act? So, Zach, the answer to this question really depends on two factors. The first factor is whether your employer has more than 26 employees, and the second factor is the reason for why you took leave. So, if your employer has more than 26 employees, you as the employee are entitled that at the end of the leave period, whether you are on the two-week leave or the 12 week leave that at the end of the period uh, you should be restored back to the same or equivalent position with the same pay if you work for a business that has less than 25 employees and you take leave because of child care issues and school closure then the business does not have to restore your position if your position no longer exists due to economic or operating conditions that affect your employment related to COVID-19. If, however, you try to come back and your position is gone, your employer does have some obligations. So as a business, you have to make reasonable efforts to restore that job, uh, that employee to a same or similar job. And if at the time that job no longer exists, you as the employer have to continue to contact the employee uh, when a position becomes available, and you have to take reasonable steps uh, for up to a one-year period to try to hire them back. So if you have an employer that has more than 26 employees, uh, you should feel very comfortable taking this benefit, assuming the business stays open. But if you have an employer that has less than 25 employees and you take leave because your child's school is closed, please know that your job and position are not completely protected or guaranteed. Ek aur important baat sick leave ke baare mein hum aapko batana chahte hain ki aur wo ye hai ki aap اگر آپ سک لیو یا ایکسٹینڈیڈ فیملی لیو پر ہیں اور ختم ہونے پر کیا آپ کا جاب کیا آپ آپ کے جاب میں دوبارہ ریٹرن ہو سکیں گے تو اس سوال کا جواب دو باتوں پر مبنی ہے پہلا یہ کہ آپ آپ کے یہاں کتنے امپلائیز کام کرتے ہیں اور دوسرا آپ یہ لیو ریکویسٹ کرنے کی وجہ کیا تھی اگر آپ کے امپلائر کے یہاں ٹوینٹی سکس سے زیادہ امپلائیز کام کرتے ہیں تو آپ اپنی پچھلی پوزیشن یا تو اسی طرح کی دوسری پوزیشن میں لوٹ سکتے ہیں مگر اگر آپ کے امپلائر کے پاس 25 سے کم امپلائیز کام کرتے ہیں اور آپ نے لیو اپنے بچوں کی اسکول یا چائلڈ کیئر بند ہونے کے سلسلے میں لی ہے تو میں آپ کو کچھ وجوہات بتانا چاہتی ہوں جس کے ذریعے آپ کے امپلائر کے پاس آپشنز ہیں اور ان انہیں ان پر لازمی نہیں ہے کہ وہ آپ کو جب جاب پہ دوبارہ لوٹائیں پہلی آپ کی پوزیشن کہ آپ کی کمپنی کو کووڈ نائنٹین کی وجہ سے ضرورت نہیں ہے تو یہ پہلی وجہ ہو سکتی ہے یا آپ کے امپلائر نے کافی کوشش کی ہے کہ آپ کو دوبارہ آپ کی پچھلی پوزیشن میں لوٹائیں یا اسی طرح کی دوسری پوزیشن میں لوٹائیں مگر یہ ممکن نہیں ہو سکا ہے یا آپ کے امپلائر نے آپ سے رابطہ قائم کرنے کی بہت کوشش کی ہے جب کوئی برابر کی پوزیشن اوپن ہوئی ہے اور یا تو پھر آپ کے امپلائر نے مسلسل ایک سال تک 
بے انتہا کوشش کی مگر آپ سے رابطہ قائم نہیں ہو سکا تو یہ چار وجوہاتوں کے بنا پر آپ کے امپلائر پر آپ کے جاب سنبھالے رکھنے کی زبردستی نہیں ہے So Samir, we've, we're getting a lot of questions around the clarification of business sizes, right? So there's the under 50 and then 50 to um, 500. So can you just spend, um, you know, just a quick second on clarifying where we're at in terms of who needs to abide by these acts? Yeah, I'm happy to do so. I know it can be confusing with all the numbers. So these benefits uh, at the top level, any employer that has less than 500 employees has to provide these benefits. If you are an employer that has less than 50 employees and your employee has to take 12 weeks of leave only for the reason that's permitted for 12 weeks, which is school closure, if doing so would jeopardize your business, and again, jeopardize your business means the cost to fund the leave would exceed your revenues or it would make it impossible for you to function, then you don't have to provide the benefit with respect to 12 weeks of leave for your employee to take care of the kids when the school is closed. But the benefits for self-care for two weeks being paid, the benefits for two weeks pay for taking care of others, those have to be provided by all employers from one employee to 500 employees. The only exemption that might exist is if you have less than 50, and it's only for the benefit related to closure of schools. So while there's confusion, you should know as an employer that regardless, no matter how many employees you have, so long as you're under 500, the two-week benefit for self-care categories and the two-week benefit for care for others, you must provide. And if you terminate an employee because they ask you for those benefits, or you discriminate against an employee, if they ask you for those benefits, you are exposing yourself up to a lawsuit from that employee. Great, thank you, Samir. This, is, this has been really helpful. So if an employer is open, but furloughs me, we have heard that, that term probably in job-related discussions. What does that mean? What does that term mean? And If I am on furlough, can I take advantage of these paid sick leave and expanded family leave benefits? Sure, so the term furlough is something, like you mentioned, we are hearing a lot right now. It's very common in service and retail industries. Furlough means that you are not being laid off, you are not being terminated, your employment is just being put on hold. The hope is, is that when the economy turns, your employer will start giving you hours and you'll be able to work again. So your question asks, if a business is open, but me as an employee, I have been furloughed, am I entitled to any of these benefits we're talking about today? The answer to that question is no. If you were on furlough, you were not entitled to take any of these paid sick leave benefits. You probably hear a lot of furlough loves today. تو اس کا کیا مطلب ہے بیسکلی جب کسی کو فرلو کیا جاتا ہے تو اس کا مطلب ہے کہ آپ کا جاب ہولڈ پر رکھا گیا ہے اور ختم نہیں ہوا مطلب کہ آپ کو فیوچر میں واپس جاب پر بلایا جا سکتا ہے مگر اگر آپ فرلو ہو جاتے ہیں تو آپ کا امپلائر آپ کو سک لیو دینے کے لیے مجبور نہیں ہے میننگ آپ سک لیو کے لیے امتارل نہیں ہوں گے This is the perfect point to now talk about unemployment. This past few weeks, we have seen over 3 million new unemployment applications. Umera Kassam, an executive HR consultant, and Jasmine Tirani, an HR strategist and coach, will now join us in this conversation. Umera, Samir just spoke to us about furlough and helped us understand that it means employment on hold. What other situations can be eligible for unemployment insurance? That's a great question, Zach. Thank you for having me, first of all. I'm happy to talk a little bit more about unemployment. So picking up on Samir's point about an employee that is furloughed, he spoke specifically about how that employee is not entitled to the paid sick time. However, they are entitled to unemployment. Um, they are eligible to apply for unemployment. And we'll talk uh, momentarily about how you apply. 
The second bucket of people that are eligible to apply for unemployment are those who have had a reduction in hours from what they're normally working. Um, so whether you're full-time or part-time, if you've had a reduction in hours, you can apply for a partial unemployment benefit. The third bucket uh, that we should look at is people that are actually terminated or laid off through no fault of their own. Meaning if you were laid off due to your business closing, for example, because of COVID, that would be no fault of your own and therefore you would, you would be eligible for unemployment. Very interesting. So just to clarify, if my hours have been cut due to COVID-19, can I file for unemployment insurance? Yes, absolutely. That's an important point that we want to make here today. Um, you can apply and receive some type of partial unemployment compensation due to your reduced hours. Great. Jasmine, can you expand on this point? Sure, Zach. So, Jamaat ko ye batane mein mujhe mutakti hi hogi ki agar is COVID-19 ke wajay se agar aapke hours kam ho gaye ho ya aapko terminate kiya gaya ho so, be up unemployment. Yani Beiro's Gari ka insurance hassle kar sakte hai. Up is kiliye eligible hai. Hmm, that's very cool. So, what if one has never filed for unemployment insurance? How can one file? So, Mara? Zach, that's a, that's a great question, yeah. especially for those that have never filed before. So, what's interesting here is that. State unemployment is actually administered at the state level, which means there are literally 50 different state unemployment websites that you need to go to. So you need to find your state's unemployment website in order to apply. Uh, the Aga Khan Economic Planning Board has made available, and we've talked about this economic resource guide. Um, it is available at uh, the website that is going to be displayed on the screen here on the American Ismaili Chamber of Commerce. Um, this guide will actually have information for you on the different websites for unemployment. Also, we are adding to this site um, some videos to actually walk people through how you can apply for unemployment. These videos will be available in multiple languages. Um, please note that the CARES Act, which is the federal bill that was signed into uh, effect recently, is actually a federal unemployment benefit that is added onto your state unemployment. Therefore, you do not have to apply separately for this federal funding. If you qualify for the state unemployment, you will also qualify for federal funding. And we'll talk more about that in a, in a few minutes. Sure. So thanks, Omera. So agar aap agar unemployment benefits ya berozgari ki adai aap apne state level ki agencies dwara hasil kar sakte hai. Ye kaise karna hai? Iske do tarah ke hote hai. Ek to aap state level ki website pe jaake kar sakte hai jo online hai ya fir state ko phone kar sakte hai. Aapki sahuliyat ke liye ek EPB ne alag alag state ke mutabik Video guidelines tayar ki hai jo urdu mein available hogi. Ye video mein aapko step by step dikhaya jayega ki application kaise karte hai. Ye video guidelines AICC ke website par available ki jayegi. Aur ek point yaad rakhni hogi ki jo ye naya CARES Act aaya hai uske mutabik aapko ek add-on benefit milega. Jiske liye Aapko unemployment benefit ya ki berozgari ki adai hasil karne ke liye hi application karni hogi. To agar aap berozgari adai yani ki unemployment benefit ke liye eligible hote hai, to aapko CARES Act ke hisab se bhi aapko federal funding milegi. Excellent information. That's really good. Thank you. So now that I understand that I'm eligible for unemployment insurance. When applying for the unemployment, insur unemployment insurance, what information should I be, be prepared to bring with me? 
That's a good question, Zach. Uh, one thing I should note is referring back to the various state websites, some states might have some additional items that they may ask for, but a general rule of thumb is on the screen. The type of things that you will need is your last employer's business name and business address. Secondly, you will want your first and last dates of employment. That should include month, day, and year. Uh, very importantly, you will need your recent wages, whether those are from your W-2 or your 1099 from the previous and the current year. And finally, you will need your alien registration card if you are not a U.S. citizen. Uh, as we mentioned in the last webinar on this topic, while green card holders are eligible to apply for unemployment, they should seek the counsel from their immigration attorney to ensure receiving these unemployment benefits will not adversely impact them in any way. Thank you, Homera. So, as Homera has told you, that if you have an application, you will need to have the information of your employer. So, the information you need is your employer's business name and address, your employment ka first or last date, or current wages, which is your W-2 or 1099 income, hai, current year, ka, wo hath mein aapke rakhna hoga. or alien registration number, if you are a green card holder. Hai. यहां पे मैं जमात को बताना चाहूंगी कि ग्रीन कार्ड होल्डर्स जो है उनसे गुजारिश की जाती है कि अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट या बेरोजगारी बेनिफिट्स अप्लाई करने से पहले वो अपने इमिग्रेशन अटॉर्नी के साथ सलाह मशवरा कर ले ताकि आने वाले प्रोसेस के लिए परेशानी ना हो यस गिवन द नंबर्स ऑफ एप्लीकेंट्स दिस दिस इन दिस एनवायरमेंट हाउ लॉन्ग डू यू थिंक इट विल टेक to receive the unemployment benefits? Great question, Zach. So after you've actually filed for unemployment, you've put your claim into the system, be it by phone or be it by website, you should receive a response in approximately two weeks. If approved, you can expect to receive your first payment two to three weeks from that date. So if you take it from the day of the claim all the way through the first payment, you're looking at uh, for perhaps five weeks. Wow. So Jasmine, this is a really important point and just really want to manage people's expectations. Would you agree with this? Yes. Sahi bataya. Agar aap employment uh, benefit file karte hai, jo berozgari faide ka approval aap file karte ho, to uska approval aap do hafte baad dek sakte ho. Ya approval aapko do hafte baad milega. Or payment uske दो से तीन हफ्ते बाद मिलेगी तो रफली आप समझ सकते हो कि जब से आप अप्लाई किए हो टिल आपको जो पहला पेमेंट मिलता है उस वो दरमियान कुछ चार से पांच हफ्तों का होगा जमात को गुजारिश है कि अगर ये आप ऑनलाइन अप्लाई करते हो तो आप शाम के साथ से लेके सुबह के सात बजे तक से अप्लाई करो क्योंकि हमने नोटिस किया है कि ऑनलाइन पे काफी ट्रैफिक हो रही है इन एप्लीकेशन के लिए And, and how much unemployment can one expect to receive? Yeah, I, that's probably the biggest uh, mystery when someone's never filed for unemployment before, Zach. Uh, generally, individuals are paid about half of their weekly wages based on earnings from their previous four quarters. There are caps on this, um, similar to what Samir was describing on uh, the paid sick leave. Um, these caps do vary by state, so I'm not going to mention any caps here today, but you can look at your state's unemployment site to understand more about what these caps are. Uh, the CARES Act that was signed into law last week uh, will be providing extra funding to the unemployment check. The, this bill actually adds $600 per week from the federal government on top of whatever base amount you're already receiving from the state. So that boosted payment will last for four months. Please note that unemployment payments are taxable and you will have a choice to withhold your taxes as you receive the payment or pay your taxes when you are filing your returns at the end of the year. So just like Homera has told you, that unemployment insurance, you will get total wages from 
आधी वेज मिल सकती है जो पिछले चार क्वार्टर के मुताबिक कैलकुलेट की जाती है हर एक स्टेट का एक अलग अलग कैप है जो स्टेट गाइडलाइंस में मौजूद होगा प्लस इसके अलावा आपको केयर्स एक्ट के मुताबिक वीकली 600 डॉलर की एक्स्ट्रा फंडिंग मिलेगी जो ये चार महीने तक मिलती रहेगी टिल जुलाई 2020। ट्वेंटी यहाँ पे नोट करना जरूरी है कि अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट या ये बेरोजगारी पेमेंट जो मिलती है वो टैक्सेबल है तो या आप पहले से ही इसको विथहोल्ड करवा सकते हैं या फिर ईयर एंड टैक्स फाइलिंग के टाइम पर ये टैक्स जमा करवाना होगा That's very, very useful information, Humaira. We've been getting a few questions coming in around tips. Can you comment on how tips play into um, filing for unemployment insurance? Yes, you are going to uh, report your taxable wages, and so if you are claiming your tips on your taxes. you will be able to see the benefit from that when it comes to the amount of unemployment that you receive and does that then um also depend state by state it does but uh that description is a good general description of what all states will cover okay wonderful wonderful now is there a possibility that one's application could be rejected What is your advice if this happens? Unfortunately, Zach, that is a possibility. Applications do get rejected and there's a variety of reasons for which they could get rejected, which we won't go into today. However, it's important to know what to do if your application does get rejected. There is an appeals process and that appeals process is again something that varies from state to state. Again, we've posted the ismailichamber.org-erg website on the screen. It's important because we want you to know that these state-by-state -state guides that we have created um, will actually also include some information about the appeals process. It is important to note that um, the federal funding through the CARES Act is tied to the state unemployment decision and so therefore if you are rejected through the state you will not qualify for the federal $600 additional amount so jaisa huma humera ne hame bataya ki agar aapka unemployment ya berozgari application reject hoti hai to aap kya kar sakte ho to iske liye aap fir se appeal kar sakte ho jo सेम वे से आप कर सकते हो जैसे ऑनलाइन या फोन करके और ये ध्यान रखना जरूरी है कि अगर आपका अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट या बेरोजगारी एप्लीकेशन रिजेक्ट होती है तो आपको फेडरल फंडिंग की जो 600 डॉलर फंडिंग है वो भी नहीं मिल सकती है इसलिए अपील करना जरूरी होगा अगर आपको ये एप्लीकेशन करने में कोई मसला हो रहा हो या आपको कोई दिक्कत हो रही हो तो प्लीज आप एक्सेस हेल्पलाइन को वन एट फोर फोर फाइव फाइव टू 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 थ्री सेवन पर फोन करे और मदद मांगे इकोनॉमिक प्लानिंग बोर्ड मेंबर्स आपकी मदद के लिए हाजिर है जो तमने अप्लाई करवामा कोई पड़कारो अथवा समस्याओं नो सामनो करवो पड़े छे तो कृपा करीने एक्सेस हेल्पलाइन ने फोन करे सहायता माते बोर्ड मेंबरोस उपलब्ध थे Kumara what would your recommendation be around timing right so let's say i was um laid off or i was uh, i lost my job on march 15th so what would you recommend um be the timing so if i can maybe survive for a month on on some savings um maybe i can apply april 15th what would you recommend i would recommend applying as soon as possible back and the reason why is um the unemployment commission will actually look at the gap in your employment and the time that you right. started applying and actually question why why you waited so long um mm -hmm. that plus the federal funding that we talked about 
that federal funding is available for four months. And so you want to take advantage um, where you can of this extra money that is available. So my advice would be to apply as soon as you are not bringing in income. Wonderful. That's great. So similar to the first portion of this webinar, we want to put this knowledge to test. Let's explore some case studies. I am an Uber rider, a ride share driver, such as Uber or Lyft, and I am no longer able to work due to the impact of COVID-19. Can I claim unemployment? So typically, Zach, those that are self-employed or freelancers, gig workers or contractors, normally under normal, normal circumstances cannot apply for unemployment. However, the CARES Act creates a new temporary pandemic unemployment assistance program uh, through the end of this year to help people who lose their work as a direct result of this public health emergency. Therefore, people like Uber and Lyft drivers may be eligible. Other examples of people that are also may be eligible are beauty salon workers, C-store workers, 1099 contractors that are authorized to work in the United States. Yeah, so that's really important. So let's just say that again. All right, so the new CARES Act has a temporary pandemic unemployment assistance program ki sahuliya di gayi hai jisme jo bhi self employed workers hai jaise ki hamare uber or lyft drivers freelancers graphic designers gig workers ya c store workers ya salon workers ya fir jo 1099 contractors hai jinke paas work authorization hai ve log apna unemployment ya berozgari application फाइल कर सकते हैं ये एप्लीकेशन स्टेट लेवल के वेब पेज से ऑनलाइन या फोन करके कर सकते हैं दैट्स ग्रेट इफ आई एम केस नंबर 2 इफ आई एम एन एम्प्लॉयर व्हाट इज द इंपैक्ट ऑन मी इन माय फॉर्मर एम्प्लॉइज फाइल फॉर अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट या दैट्स अ ग्रेट क्वेश्चन जैक एज अ स्मॉल बिजनेस ओनर माय सेल्फ दिस इज एन इंपोर्टेंट क्वेश्चन um typically you do have an unemployment rate employers each have an un unemployment rate and this rate is set by the number of people uh, number of your former employees that apply for unemployment um the answer is going to be state by state uh but at least in in uh past cases i have seen where for example in the state of texas during during the hurricane harvey incident there was actually a moratorium put on your unemployment taxes being raised um for the employer so there are exemptions that are going to be available again it depends on the state that you're in but employers should seek this exemption for from the un from their unemployment rate rising um if the unemployment that's being taken is due to covid सो जैसे हुमेरा ने बताया अगर आपका बिजनेस है या स्मॉल बिजनेस है और आपका एम्प्लॉय अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट बेनिफिट फाइल करता है तो आपका अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट रेटिंग ऊपर जा सकता है इसे रोकने के लिए आप एक पेटिशन फाइल कर सकते हैं जो ये रेटिंग को एग्जाम करने में मदद रूप हो सकती है If my employee asks me to take paid sick leave and I cannot pay for it, can I fire them? If you, as an employer, uh, are subject to providing the paid sick leave, and we talked about, there's a wide net. Um, all employers from one to five hundred employees. Uh, unless the small exemption we talked about applies if you have an employee that asks you to take this benefit and you fire them as a result uh, that exposes you to a lawsuit to pay for their wages that they lose now potentially wages they lose in the future and to cover their attorney's fees so it could be a significant liability so you definitely should not fire your employees if they ask for this benefit great thank you yes Yes, Reverend. Yes. So, अगर आप 
एम्प्लॉय पेड सिक लीव मांगता है और आप उसे पेड सिक लीव नहीं दे सकते हैं तो आप एम्प्लॉय को फायर नहीं कर सकते हैं क्योंकि आप पर लॉ सूट फाइल हो सकता है और ये लॉ सूट आपको पेड सिक लीव से ज्यादा महंगा होगा And then, if I'm a small business owner, can my employee file for unemployment insurance and paid sick leave at the same time? Yeah, that's a great question, and the answer is no. An employee can only take paid sick leave if they are employed, and unemployment is only if an employee is no longer employed by that employer. So, uh, no, they cannot take both. So to answer that, कि आप ये दो चीज नहीं ले सकते हैं अगर आप पेड सिक लीव देते हैं दैट मीन्स वो एम्प्लॉई आपका एक्टिव है इसके लिए उसे वो पेड सिक लीव मिलती है लेकिन वो एम्प्लॉई अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट तब ले सकता है जब वो टर्मिनेट हो गया होता है तो आप ये दो चीज साथ में नहीं दे सकते हैं Great. What if I only work part time? Can I still file for unemployment? Part-time workers, furloughed employees, and anyone who can no longer physically go to their job, like for example, waitstaff at a restaurant who has been ordered to close, will be covered under this expansion. Unemployment insurance will also be extended to people who recently started a new job but were laid off due to the pandemic, even if they don't have a sufficient work history that was previously required to be eligible. सो so, जैसे हमारा ने बताया अगर आप पार्ट टाइमर हैं तो आप क्या ये अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट फाइल कर सकते हैं इसका जवाब है हाँ आप अगर एक पार्ट टाइमर है या आपको अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इंश्योरेंस बेरोजगारी बेनिफिट मिल सकती है अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट और इंश्योरेंस और बेरोजगारी बेनिफिट उन लोगों को भी मिलेगी जो रिसेंटली नए जॉब पे लगे हैं या और ले ऑफ हो गए थे और जिनके पास पिछले छह महीने के आवर्स भी नहीं है That's great. Very, very, very informative. Very, very informative. Thank you. So, you know, we've been hearing a lot of um, news lately around the, the COVID nineteen pandemic has enabled a lot of scams to happen. Humera, um, one of the scams I recently heard was about, um, uh, you know, people calling um, eligible. Uh, workers to say, please provide us with your credit card or bank information, and we will deposit your, you know, six hundred dollars um, into your account. Can you please talk to us and provide some advice around how we should um, react to any type of these phone calls? Yeah, Zach, that's a great uh, question. It's unfortunate that we're having to talk about this subject, but the reality is, is there are people that take advantage of situations like this when people are, people are at their most vulnerable. Um, I would tell people to please be cautious about any phone calls that they get where they are being asked for their social security number, their credit card, or any other personal confidential information. Um, that's good advice at any time, but especially at a time like this. The unemployment commission, for example, is never going to call you and offer you unemployment. The only time that they're going to get on a call with you is if you have a telephone appeal scheduled with them or a telephone interview scheduled with them. And again, those will be things that are scheduled, and therefore you will see receive correspondence through the unemployment agency. Uh, both through the unemployment inbox, uh, through your email, as well as in writing in the mail, so that you will know that that call is called. That's why you will know that that is a valid call. Um, other than that, no one's ever going to call you and say, "I'm from the unemployment commission. We want to offer you unemployment. Give us your social security number." You can't initiate an application that way. Great. जमात से ये रिक्वेस्ट करने में आती है कि आप लोग ध्यान रखें 
और चौकन्ना रहे कि फरेबी कॉलर्स यानी जो स्कैमर्स है वो इस वक्त काफी फोन कॉल्स करते हैं और आपके सोशल सिक्योरिटी या आपके बैंक डिटेल्स या क्रेडिट कार्ड डिटेल्स फोन पे मांगते हैं तो आपको चौकन्ना करना चाहेंगे कि आप ये डिटेल्स ना दें और ध्यान रखें कि कोई भी अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट एजेंसी आपको फोन करके ये सब डिटेल्स नहीं पूछ सकती है अगर आपको फोन आ रहे हैं तो वो एक अपील के लिए होगा जो आपको पता होगा कि आपने अप्लाई किया है उस सिलसिले में होगा तो आपके पास आपके पास ईमेल होगा या मेल होगा जो आपके घर पर आया होगा सो so, जमा से रिक्वेस्ट है कि आप चौकन्ना रहे and my shop is now closed i am no longer able to work am i as the employer able to apply for uninsur um in un- unemployment insurance yeah great question you are eligible to imply, apply if your business is closed if you yourself are on the payroll of the company then you have w2 wages um and so you can apply through that if you are not able to uh if you do not take a, a set payroll from the the company and you're not a w2 employee of your own company then you would need to apply using uh whatever income you filed on your tax return last year that's great thank you samira i want to bring you into the conversation um Recently I've heard uh scenarios where a small business owner as uh or or a business owner let's just say a business owner has actually held salary so they said that uh based on the current environment we cannot pay you and so therefore we're going to um have you continue to work but we were we're going to hold your uh paycheck Can you please provide some uh, guidance and then what what are your thoughts around this? Yeah, we are starting to hear about that happening more and more in small businesses and retail businesses. You as a business owner cannot withhold wages for employees when they are due. So, if you are unable to pay your employees, then you need to have them stop working and for every hour that they have worked, you need to pay them like you normally do. If you do not, that exposes the business owner personally to liability and fees from the Texas payroll, the Texas Workforce Commission, or your state commissions, and potentially also a lawsuit from the employee, where again you will end up paying much more than the amount that you owe the employee. So, if you have outstanding wages that you need to pay your employer, your employees, you must absolutely do so at the same time and schedule that you typically do. Shamsha, are you able to provide any additional guidance? Sure. So, if you are a small business owner or retail store owner or any business owners and your employees are working here, then by law, you have to provide their salary. If you are not working with them and you don't pay salary, then you have a issue of liability. You can pay directly to the state or the employee. तो इसलिए बहुत जरूरी है कि आप ये जहन में रखें कि अगर आपके पास एम्प्लॉइज काम करते हैं तो एवरी आवर जो वो काम करते हैं आपको उनके लिए उनकी पेमेंट और उनकी सैलरी देना जरूरी है ग्रेट थैंक यू समीर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन हियर इफ एन एम्प्लॉयर विद लेस देन 50 एम्प्लॉइज फर्लोस एन एम्प्लॉई इज द एम्प्लॉयर रिक्वायर्ड टू प्रोवाइड पेड सिक लीव और pay for 12 weeks for school closing reasons that's a good question if you as an employer are unable to handle take paying an employee for the paid sick leave then furloughing your group of employees uh you can do that and not owe the benefit but if an employee comes to you and says i want to take this benefit and you say no i'm putting you on furlough that is not something you can do so you have to make that decision in advance uh and not do it in retaliation or in response to a request but if you have employees that are on furlough already then you do not owe them this benefit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's great and humera 
I have a question here around if an employee works 10 hours a week and loses their job, would they get the full $600 federal um, unemployment insurance? Was there a, was there a, a recommendation? Is it full-time employees only get of the 600 in your research? You know, Were you able to find something? Yeah, that's great. Great question, Zach. Uh, there is still more information coming out about the CARES Act. Just like Families First, uh, while the, that act was signed on the 18th and we're just now getting more details of how that's going to be administered, the same thing goes for CARES. That was signed just last week. So up until now, everything we've heard is that this $600 amount is going to be added to whatever your state amount is. So even if you get a partial payment from the state, that's what we've heard. That being said, um, there is more clarification coming out from the different unemployment work, uh, work commissions, like in Texas, that's the Texas Workforce Commission, um, to provide more clarity on that in the coming days. My advice to anybody in that situation is it shouldn't preclude you from going ahead and applying for unemployment in that situation. At a minimum, you're going to collect your state unemployment you may or may not get that full 600 amount, but everything that I've read alludes, makes me believe that it is that full 600. That's excellent, thank you. Another question is, and again, let's, let's repeat this. I think it's really important to repeat this information. If I'm a taxi driver and I get 1099, Am I able to apply for unemployment insurance? So a lot of questions sort of keep coming through the uh, chat room around the clarification as to who is eligible for unemployment insurance. Can I ask uh, you and Jasmine to maybe repeat that uh, part of the webinar? Yeah, absolutely. Um, basically, if you are a 1099 employee and authorized to work in the United States, you are eligible under the CARES Act to file for unemployment. Jasmine? Yes. So, if you are a 1099 contractor, ya Uber driver, ya taxi driver, you CARES Act ke dwara, aap ye unemployment ya berozgari application file kar sakte hai. Great, great. And then, Samir, I think we have sort of, you know, uh, the the clarification around uh, jeopardizing your business, right? So um, the exemption on for uh, companies that are under fifty. Um, can you just maybe speak again about um, what qualifies as uh, jeopardizing your business? Sure. So let's first be clear that. If you have an employee that's looking to take the two-week leave for self-care or the two-week leave to take care of others, there is absolutely no exemption. As of today, those benefits have to be provided. <clears throat> there is an exemption that if you have less than 50 employees and you have an employee that comes to you and says, I'd like to take the 12-week leave period because my child's school is closed, you do not have to provide that benefit if Doing so would jeopardize your business, and to your question, what does that mean? That means that having to pay for that leave would put your revenues below your costs, and without this employee, that you would not be able to operate your business because it would be hard to find someone to replace them, and they have a specialized skill that's hard to replace. So if you meet that hardship exemption, uh, you do not have to provide the benefit related to child care because schools are closed. Again, that is the only <clears throat> exemption that applies here. So if an employee comes to you, whether you have 50 employees or less, and says, uh, I need to take two weeks because I have COVID-related symptoms, my doctor told me to quarantine, you have to provide that benefit. The exemption only applies with respect to children home from school, and it has to be that hardship uh, to the extent it jeopardizes your business. Great, thank you. And I'll stay with you, Samir. How will you get money back paid in sick leave? Can you only deduct it in Social Security portion of tax or entire payroll tax? That's a good question. 
uh, the deduction that you get, it, it's a credit, uh, so 100% of what you pay for paid sick leave, that value you get to take as a credit against only the Social Security portion of the employer tax liability. Now let's say in a quarter you paid, or let's say monthly, you can take that, you can pay that tax monthly. Let's say monthly your Social Security tax liability is $5,000, and that month you pay $10,000 in paid sick leave benefit. You would cancel out your tax liability of 5000 and in the remaining 5000 you can ask the IRS uh, to pay that money in advance to you. And then within two weeks, the government is saying they will provide you a check. So while you have to pay for it on the front end, you would get the tax credit against your employer portion of Social Security taxes on the back end. And if there's a deficit, you would get a cash payment within two weeks. Wonderful. Thank you for that clar clarity. Um, Humera, actually, no, I think this goes back to Samir as well, please. Can I legally reduce payroll due to financial impact? Yes. So the answer to that question is, is generally yes. The only limitation is, is that you treat everyone the same when you do it. You don't. <clears throat> so when I say that you can't discriminate for someone and say, I'm only going to reduce for my males and not my females or something that is related to a protected class. So race, religion, gender. Um, so, so long as you are fair in your reductions in that regard, so long as you don't reduce pay below minimum wage for your respective state, you're able to reduce salaries during hard times or any time. It's, it's in the employer's discretion. That's wonderful. Thank you. So I think we have um, a question here that says, it's important to mention that while you are waiting to get a response from your state, after filing for unemployment, you must continue to file for unemployment weekly. Kumara, did you find that in, your, in, in, our, in our sort of um, research? Yeah, so the process for unemployment is that there is an application you do on the front end, and then what happens is that uh, every two weeks or weekly, depending on your state, uh, in Texas, for example, where I live, it's every two weeks, you have to go in and do what's called a request for payment. What request for payment is, is it's asking you in the last two weeks, um, were you able to work? Were you looking for work? Were you, um, you know, how many, how many job applications did you make? You don't necessarily have to provide proof of those things, but you need to be able to offer um, that you've been looking, provide proof that you are able and available to work. Also, it's going to ask you, did you work at all during those two weeks? So perhaps you are in a reduced hours situation. <laughs> perhaps instead of your normal 40 hours a week, you're only getting 10 hours a week. You can then put in, um, I got 10 hours on week one, but on week two, I got zero hours. Your unemployment check will vary accordingly. So every two weeks, you will need to go in and make this request for payment. That's a normal part of the unemployment process, not something that's mm -hmm. new to this because of the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. So I know we have a lot of questions coming in, and what we'll do is we will um, um, co we'll collate these questions and uh, continue to provide information through our um, guides and through the website. Uh, I'm sure we can talk about these topics for hours. I want to take this opportunity to thank all our speakers tonight, and I'm going to ask the speakers to please share with us um, any kind of parting uh, comments that you know you think that is so important that people should walk away with from this webinar. Um, I will start with uh, Samir, please, and then I'll go to Shamsha, Humera, and then uh, Jasmine. Yeah, thank you, Zach. First, I appreciate all the questions. We've tried to answer them, and I'm looking forward to providing answers for the rest. Um, this is obviously a very complicated area with a lot of nuances. We've tried to summarize uh, the more pertinent aspects. Just please remember that walking away, um, you know, if you're an employer with less than 500 employees, 
And if you have someone approach you for wanting to take two weeks of leave for self-care or wanting to take two weeks of leave to take care of others, that's something you absolutely have to do. And then with respect to the 12-week school closure, there are some exemptions uh, that may apply, and those will be available for you in the ERG. Uh, so while you might have questions, I believe that the resources that will be provided and that are available will be able to answer all of the questions that were being asked. So uh, be careful before you make decisions, be thoughtful, and know that this is a government benefit that the government really wants businesses to provide employees. And so before you take rash action, make sure you are thinking about, you know, what the government was trying to accomplish here, that the employers are really here to try to facilitate that. And then the hope is, is that the employers will be able to pay for it through the tax credits and through the other SBA loan programs that we've had discussions about on the other webinars, and I believe we will have more in the future. So, Samir, on that thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of ask a question for, for, um, for clarification. While I'm waiting for the funding, can we request our employees to file for unemployment until that funding is received? So I don't believe so because for you to get paid sick leave, you have to be an active employee. So you would not have the opportunity to get unemployment during that time because to qualify for this benefit, you have to be an active working employee. So if you are not working, then you would be taking unemployment anyways and then the paid sick leave benefits would not be available to you. So I don't think an employer uh, has the option, if an employee asks to go on this leave, to say, okay, why don't you stop working and take unemployment instead? Uh, I think that would be a problem. Great, thank you. Humera? So my advice is uh, slightly more philosophical. Um, you know, I think this is an uncertain period in all of our lives. It's unprecedented for sure. Uh, I think that it's an amazing time to take any uncertainty and take this time to really upskill, to take this time to reskill. Um, it, it's just a unique time in our lives. Some of us are stuck at home. Some of us have our kids at home. Um, have a positive attitude and, and think about what you can do in this period of time to really take your current skills and enhance them be them through online courses, be them through online networking, be them through whatever avenue you choose, but take advantage of this time and make it productive. Thank you. Shamsha? So my parting thoughts would be the main chahungi mujhe pata hai ki aap logon ke sath humne bahut sari information share ki hai aur bahut sari information available hai to aap ghabraiye mat agar aap employer hai ya employee agar aapko kuch koi bhi sawal hai aur aapko samajh mein nahi aata ki kis tarah se handle karna hai to please hame contact kare hum yahan par aapke liye available hain just give us a call and access number aur hum puri koshish karenge ki aapka saath de sake thank you shamsha jasmine yeah my takeaway uh जमात के लिए यह है कि आपको जो भी ये आज इंफॉर्मेशन दी गई है मुझे पता है ये काफी सारा है इसे थोड़ा टाइम लगेगा आपको समझने के लिए लेकिन हम आपके साथ हैं आप अपना अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इंश्योरेंस जल्द से जल्द फाइल कर दीजिए दिस इज माय टिपिंग पॉइंट फॉर एवरीवन जो लेड ऑफ हो गए हैं बिकॉज इसको टाइम लगेगा एंड वी सी दैट इट विल टेक मोर टाइम फॉर द आपके पेमेंट को फिर से आपके पास आने के लिए तो मेरी रिक्वेस्ट है कि आप ये अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इंश्योरेंस जल्द से जल्द अप्लाई करें और दूसरा ये जो वक्त आपको मिला है उसका सही इस्तेमाल कर लीजिए आपके फैमिली के साथ आपके स्पाउस के साथ आपके फ्रेंड्स के साथ आप अभी भी उनके साथ कनेक्ट कर सकते हैं और जहां पे भी आपको दिक्कत लग रही है आप एक्सेस हेल्पलाइन को फोन करना ना भूलिए थैंक यू <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's a clear message here around the access uh, helpline. But you know, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our speakers tonight. Your guidance and knowledge of the Families First Coronavirus Response Act and unemployment insurance has been very valuable. To our participants, please be reminded that a link to tonight's webinar recording, plus the economic resource guide, will be made available by email within. the next 24 to 48 hours and finally if you have any questions at all 
If you want to connect with the Chamber of Commerce or the Aga Khan Economic Planning Board, please call the Access Helpline. The number to that Access Helpline is 1-844-552-2237. Please continue to stay informed and stay safe. Ya Alimadat.